play uh, tomorrow evening at approximately 7.05. Uh, one question for, for you three guys. Um, at what point in the season did you feel that you were really playing at the top of your game compared to maybe earlier in the year? You got it. Um, I think it's a long process this season. There's a lot of games and there's a lot of ups and downs. Um, so I don't know if there's any particular point where we felt we were playing our best basketball or our worst basketball. It's just, it's just I think the waves and the tides of, of the season. You know, sometimes you have highs, sometimes you have lows. But overall, I feel like we've had a lot more highs this season. Okay, questions, please. Uh, ben Balch. Time. Here. We'll get you a new one there, Ben. Uh, for Tiger and Jaime, uh, who were here last year in the tournament, uh, was that Akron game maybe a good, I won't say wake-up call, but just indication of what can happen in the first game when you go up against a fearless team, regardless of what their seed is, if they can win the game and you have to be locked in? Um, i just say that, you know, every team that's in the tournament is here for a reason. Um, they either won their conference tournament or... You know, they got picked and had a good enough record. So we understand that every team in this tournament is, you know, a winning team and they, they're not scared and they're here for a reason. So, you know, we're going into this game. We just got to prepare like it's any regular game. And um, we respect them as an opponent. And we're just going to try to win and do what we need to do and, you know, execute our scouting report against them because we know they're a good team. Sir, front row. Uh, Jim Alexander from the Southern California News Group. Um, Amari, what have the two guys to your left told you about what to expect at tournament time? <laughs> I don't know. What, what, what have you guys? <laughs> you're, you're trying to decide what's shareable? <laughs> I'm, I'm really just trying to think. Um, yeah, that it's just going to be a great atmosphere, um, something that you really can't um, prepare for uh, leading up to, like, now. Um, I feel like um, the Pac-12 tournament was, like, um, a little indication of what March can look like, but um, I don't know, to just get lost in the moment, I guess. Do you really have any expectations going into this? No, just to have, like, a lot of fun. Um, just stay in a moment. Jake Eaton from CBS 13. Hi, May. Uh, your sister is going to be playing Sac State on Saturday in her first March Madness experience. Any piece of advice that you've given her at all, especially you've been here before, you've played in this type of tournament before? I would just say enjoy it. Um, it's a one-game tournament, so a lot of things can happen. Um, enjoy as much as you can. Uh, it's crazy how fast this has all gone by. I know um, even this season, I can't believe I'm already here. It feels like I, we just in the just won the Pac-12 regular season, and now we're already back in March Madness. And uh, just enjoy it. It goes by fast, so enjoy every moment. Play your heart out. Question is for um, Jaime. Uh, NBC, Mario, NBC Los Angeles, and Telemundo Los Angeles as well. Um, this is a very unique uh, group with um, an international background. You guys, you know, guys from Italy, and Nigeria, uh, Turkey, and of course you uh, having, you know, Mexican-American background. As the first uh, player of the year in the Pac-12 to have that sort of background, what's your, do you feel like you have a, a role model and what's the message that you want to send out? Um, and not to put you on the spot, but if you can respond in Spanish as well. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try my best. Um, <laughs> I, I still need to work on my Spanish, uh, but, uh, I think I, 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 I try not to look at it um, such a wide picture. I think it's very easy to get lost with, through all that pressure um, to try to look at myself as something you know bigger than myself. But I, I try to understand it as best as I can. And I also try to try to go out there and be myself, really. I think that's the only thing I can do is just be myself. And if people are going to follow me or, or I'm going to inspire people, then it's just going to happen naturally. I don't try to do anything out of the ordinary and other than just be myself. So. Can you try Spanish? I can, but like I said, I don't. Um, uh, let me let me think. Um, <laughs> put me on the spot here. Um, can you can you help me out? You want to help me out? 
Sure, uh, en, en cuestión de cierta responsabilidad que tienes o el mensaje claro que quieres mandar a, a es la un, audiencia. Es una responsabilidad mejor porque yo estoy en una persona, um, ¿cómo dice? Es special, un especial. especial y, y yo, yo conozco de yo tengo una um, oportunidad grande, um, ¿cómo dice? To inspire um, los niños. That was nicely done, sir. Oh, thank you. Very nice. Thanks. Uh, and, and, thank you for that. <laughs> As a follow-up, uh, you know, centuries ago when you were a freshman, you had short hair, you yeah. didn't have the, the facial hair, and now it's completely different. Is there some sort of like um, unspoken competition in the locker room to see who's got the coolest hair, or is it just sort of that <laughs> scrappy sort of uh, fighting image that you guys want to project? If you can contribute to this as well, Tiger. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think uh, I think we got a lot of hairstyles. I know Amari was up there, but he just cut it. Um, I, I try to go through my hair as uh, I treat it as like the phoenix. You know, I let it grow and then I cut it all off just to be born again. So I go through a process. <laughs> and I know Tiger's hair is great too. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's, our hair is just show um, a little bit of our personality. Some like how. <laughs> You know, we're like we're of course we're carrying players on the court and we play a certain type of way, but I think it just goes to show, you know, we don't really care what we look like. We're just trying to, you know, have fun and we're here to win games and that's what we're just trying to do. We're not really worried about everything else. Uh Jaime, uh what have you seen out of Pember? He's a six ten guy <laughs> who can shoot threes and are you expecting to have that assignment uh tomorrow? Um, yeah, I think I'm going to take that challenge. Um, I've been watching a lot of film lately. Uh, we know that he uh, can attack the rim as well. He's also a really good shooter. He gets to the foul line. Uh, I think he's averaging like 21 points per game. So he's going to be a point of emphasis on the defensive end for sure. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to take on that challenge. Tarek Patel from the Los Angeles Daily News. Tiger, so much of conference play is seeing teams that you're familiar with. But in, in tournament play, you watch film. But until you're out there, you really don't get a feel. How much? How important is identity, your own identity, in the tournament? Um, well, our identity is, of course, defense. I and mean, do you mean personally or as a team? Yeah, um, our, identi our identity is defense. So, you know, coming into the tournament, we feel like we can, um, you know, control those things. Like you can't control when the ball goes in. Um, you know, you can't control whether you turn the ball over, but you can control how hard you play on defense. You can control, you know, boxing out certain things that you can do on the defensive end. So I feel like having that as our identity um, is good. And I feel like it goes both ways for, you know, we, we're so used to playing teams in our league that they know exactly how we're going to play and they, uh, we know exactly how they're going to play. Um, but I think in this situation, it helps both teams because we don't know exactly how they play. We haven't played a team like them, and you know they don't per se know how we play. So I think that you know there's really no advantage on either side. But um, it's good that our identity is defense coming into this, and we're not uh, just focused on offense or anything. Losing in that Pac-12 uh, tournament game in the finals, does that light anything under you guys, knowing that this could be the last ride and leave it all out there? Did that send anything to you guys in that loss at all? Yeah, of course it's tough, um, you know, being a senior, losing um, the Pac-12 tournament. But, uh, you know, we know that we had a bigger goal at the start of the season. And, of course, we take it one game at a time. But, you know, it's March, it's tourney time, it's winter go home. So I think everybody is just preparing, like, the tom uh, like tomorrow couldn't be our last game. Um, you know, of course, we are preparing as well as we can, and we're confident going into it. But we're not taking any game for granted, and um, we're just going to come ready to play tomorrow. We're not really worried about the pass right now. Amari, uh, with Jalen Clark out, do you feel you need to step up a bit defensively? You might get the assignment from the other team of maybe the best perimeter player. Do you have that kind of sense? Yeah, 100%. Just um, like I said, um, I think earlier, just having a little bit more of a role of um, just locking up and like showing my defensive versatility, um, being able to guard uh, different great players and um, really just be there for my teammates. Having played at Sierra Canyon, played in some pretty big games, is that going to prepare you for something like this or are you not prepared for something as big as this? 
Um, I would say Sierra has helped me prepare for um, big games, just having uh, like big games as like a little kid. I mean, I came here and played my freshman year, um, first day championship, so I'm somewhat familiar um, with the stage, but nothing like March Madness at all. Nothing compares to it in my eyes. Uh, for anyone who wants to take it, uh, it's no secret Will's kind of struggle with his shot. What have you guys done to help him with his confidence? Because obviously he's going to get more opportunities uh, to, to make him ready to knock that down the next time he gets that chance. Um, well, we know Will's a great player, and every day in practice he shows it. So, you know, we're just trying to tell him, like, you just got to slow down in the games because we know you're a great player and you're not here for no reason. So we have never wavered confidence with him. That's why every time we pass it, we want him to shoot it because we see him hit those. We see him attack the basket and hit it. So, you know, it's just for Will, it's just slowing down a little and um, just knowing that we have so much confidence in him and that um, we're going to need him because he's going to play a big role this tourney. We're going to need him too. Yeah. Also, it's not it's not easy coming back from the injury that he came from. Um, and I think that he's still, you know, trying to find his way. And we, like Tiger said, we still have the utmost confidence in him. And every time we pass on the ball, we're going to expect him to shoot it and with without any hesitation because we, we believe in him. It's from 2003 to the present day at Murray State, Cincinnati and UCLA. And, you know, Mick, um, you were here six years ago now, believe it or not, uh, with Cincinnati and UCLA was also here, and here we are again. It's good to see you, my fine Irish friend. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like Kelly and Cronin. <laughs> <laughs> Questions for Coach Cronin? Uh, ben Balch, Los Angeles Times. It's actually it's the first room I ever asked you a question in was, was right, right here six years ago. Um, uh, Jaime seemed to be really soaking in the moment. He came in recording us with his phone. He, he answered a question in Spanish. How, uh, hold on. How did he do? Well, I don't speak Spanish, so okay. I don't know. Anybody, could anybody analyze the Spanish? Okay. It's you, very suspect. Better, better than any of us could <laughs> Okay. I guess the question is, do you feel like your team is in a good place, loose and locked in and ready to, for, for these games? Um, you know, we, we, we've got some veterans that helps us, you know, they know when to, um, you know, they know how to lead is the best way to say it. So then the young guys know, you know, they understand, Hey, you know, uh, we've worked hard and, uh, you want to enjoy this. Um, but we're here for a reason, you know, everything we do at UCLA is to prepare for this tournament. Um, doesn't you know, doesn't mean the regular season doesn't matter. You know, having 29 wins and ha having the most wins of any Power Six team is a heck of a compl an accomplishment. Um, but you know, we prepare for this tournament. So, but part of it, look, these guys, you, you know, they got to have fun. This is the time of their life. You know, but they uh, they they understand. You know, and high, like I made. Well, first of all, he's probably filming you for some show he's doing. <laughs> You know, times have changed, man. I mean, he's, you know, he could have a, he could be sending it back to Jalen Clark for his YouTube channel. Uh, you know, I think it's great. Hopefully he's, you know, whatever he's filming, whatever he's up to, he's going to make some money off of it. So, yeah, but, you know, hey, it, you know, uh, Ben, we'll see. You know, everybody comes in thinking they're in a good place. Uh, they're only, you know, only 32 teams are going to make it to the weekend. Question hey, over here. Hey, Coach. Brian Hall, UNC Asheville Radio. Uh, your evaluation of Asheville, what stands out on film, and uh, how do you grade this team and what they've done this season? Um, I think Coach Morrell's made some adjustments that have obviously, you know, from Christmas area on, that have really, really helped their team. You know, they've won 18 in their last 19. They remind, uh, they remind me of us in a way that um, they know how to win game close games. As you know, they won some close games. They came from behind in the semis and the finals. Um, so they got some guys that know how to win. Obviously, you know, uh, Coach Morrell does a great job. But uh, it's, you know, players on the floor late game um, that get better. That's what I see in a close situation. Uh, Pember's obviously great. You know, Jones is the leading scorer in the history of school, right? Um, so, uh, and they, they play hard on defense. You know, which I respect. They, they, they really defend you. Like, you know, looking at them, I can see, you know, in, in their league that they were probably had just a little bit better athlete 
than the rest of the teams in that league. And then you throw in, you know, you throw Pember in there. You know, no, nobody in the league has a guy like him. So you can see why they won. You know, they, they dominated the league the way they did. Not, not a, you know, having watching them and having coached at Murray State back in the day somewhat at the same level, you know, you, they, they've got, they got a heck of a team. Josh? Uh, Josh Dubai with AP. Uh, Mick, what kind of influence did Rick Pitino have on you as a coach and just what has made him so successful? Uh, not enough time in the day for that one. He's like my older brother. Um, you know, we're extremely close. Um, so I'm happy, happy for him. I was worried about him last year when they got beat by St. Peter's. You know, I know how hard he is on himself. So he was, uh, he was down about that. So, but I told him his mid-major stint may be over. And he, you know, he matched me two out of three NCAA tournaments, Iona and Murray State. So we'll see what the future holds. I know they got a big one at UConn on Friday. So, uh, but you know, I was lucky to have Bob Huggins and Rick Pitino a long time ago as a young guy with a full head of hair. You know, two Hall of Fame coaches that were able to mentor me and take the things that my father taught me, and um, you know, turn me into the guy that had a chance as a head coach. Um, so, but you know, you know, in my opinion, look, I'm biased. Right in modern college basketball, um, to me, I don't. Have, you know, if Rick Pitino would have never gone to the NBA, he would have been the best college coach ever. You know, in modern basketball, now Coach Wooden, obviously, all time, nobody's going to win eleven titles or um, ten titles. You know, yeah, so especially in eleven years, but um, you know, so but in modern college basketball, to me, tactically. It's not even close. From the press to the three-point shot to, to all the things he was ahead of the curve on. Um, you know, and his Louisville teams, people don't talk about innovation. You know, he's playing zone and man in the same possession. You know, teams had no idea what they were doing. You know, was that so to me, it's not even close. To quote a friend of mine, an NBA scout, he'll take your players and he'll, he'll take his players and beat you. Then the next day he'll take your players and he'll beat you. Sir? Hey, Mick, I wanted to uh, follow up on Pember a little. Uh, yeah. How unique of a matchup is he? Have you faced anyone like him this season, would you say? And what's the status on Adem Bona? Uh, Adem's getting better. He was better today. So he's able to do some stuff in practice today. We'll see how he feels. He's just sore. So every day is a progressive day for him. Um, so, you know, we'll see tomorrow. And I'm not trying to play coy. Like, literally, we'll, we'll see. So, um, I don't know him, Pember. You guys gotta gotta help me. You've probably already thought about an answer to this. I, I don't know. As far as like a, somebody that we played, that's a, no, nobody comes off the top of my head. <clears throat> you know, because Tubelis is great at driving the ball, but he doesn't shoot the ball from the perimeter. You know, so to have a you know play against a six nine guy. That <clears throat> I guess if you you know Michael Mayer from Illinois, if you were to you know, put him in this, the same position that Pember was plays. I mean, he's got the same skills, but he's a guard. And, you know, the way they use him, I, like I was alluding to, I think they made some adjustments to their offense. And they got – and they use him a lot like we use Jaime. I mean, eerily similar in the high post, top of the key area. Um, so, uh, you know, the, I call it a, it, it, it's the old Dirk Nowitzki position, which is now the, you know, the, the – the Joker, Jokic's position, because you can pass it up there, shoot it up there, drive it up there. They, you're, you're facing a basket, so you can see double teams coming. Uh, I would say the most impressive. If you lead the nation in free throw attempts, you really know how to play. Like the thing that jumps off the page in me with Pember is um, how smart he is, and I don't need to talk to him. If you try to deny him, he knows it, and he sets you up for a back door. Literally, it's like for him, it's taking candy from a baby. Like I told our guys, you're, it's like you're playing against a guy that's been playing professional basketball for 10 years. That's, like, that's the, the way he plays. I mean, he really, really knows how to play. <laughs> he knows that if you're over-aggressive, he's drawing a foul. If you're over-aggressive, before he's got the ball, he gets it back door. You know, if you're, you, he just, if you gap him, he makes a shot. If you crowd him, he drives. He's not even a great athlete, and he leads their league in block shots because of his timing. He's smart. Whenever a guy's a great shot blocker that doesn't jump out of the gym, it's because he's smart. In fact, we're, we've made a highlight clip of his blocks. 
because there's not really no time right now. I mean, I've mentioned it to Mac Etienne, but you know, you got to watch this guy. You know, you don't have to jump over the guy to try to block a shot like he did against Arizona a couple times. You know, it's all timing. So his intelligence is what is. I can just tell how smart of a player he is, combined with his ability to make shots. Sir. Tark Patel from the What's up, yeah, Tark? from the Daily News. Uh, coach uh, Mike Morell is coaching as, as a head coach in his first NCAA tournament, and I believe you're in your 14th tournament. And so I wanted to ask you when when you had your first appearance or just early on, do you remember uh, coming up against a coach that was you know experienced like yourself, and what was that like? Actually, I had coached. Uh, I don't know if I had coached against Bruce. Weber. It was Bruce Weber, and I, I don't know if I had coached against him. No, because it was my first year at Murray State. So he had just left Southern Illinois um, at that point. So, But we played to his team. Matt Painter was the coach that year. We played Southern Illinois. We beat him. So it's a good game, though. But anyway, we didn't beat Illinois. It was a great game. But uh, um, Yeah, I don't know. I think, you know, look, he's been coaching five years. You know, he, he, I'm sure he's been on many NCAA tournaments. I'm not sure as an assistant. He has. You know, I know he has. I don't know how many. Um, you know, the, nothing changes. I don't. I, I think all that stuff's overrated. He he can he can coach. And I guess the follow up would just be in the time between, in all your NCAA <clears throat> tournaments. Maybe what's one thing that stands out that's so important in these tournaments through all your years in the tournaments, coach? Oh no no, the toughest one for us right now, being healthy. But in my opinion, by far, you know, being healthy and ha you know having having your players at game time. You know, practice is overrated at this time of year. Got to be healthy. During the game, I would tell you, Tark, made shots. <laughs> we proved that two years ago on the way to the Final Four. Made shots. You can execute. Still got to, you got to make some shots. Because it's not two out of three. It's not four, you know, you know, so it's not best out of five or best out of seven made shots, which is why I allude, you know, when somebody asked me my concerns, um, you know, their ability to shoot the three is a huge concern. Because they only got to, you, you, you let a team go we'll have one night against you where they make 13 to 15 threes, you could be in deep trouble. I don't care who you are. Just speaking. Ben. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In theory, ben not necessarily. eight times. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just speaking in theory, not necessarily in relation to a dem. But if you had a player who was like available, but only eighty-five percent, would you play him or would you try to rest him and get him to one hundred percent the next game? It's great, great, greatly worded question. I want, I want to commend you on that. Um, yeah, a dem situation, you know, being transparent with you is, you know, twofold. It's let's see. We're trying to you know get him better every day, and and then when the game comes, we'll assess where he's at, and then I'll make that decision. You know, whether if it would be prudent to rest him or not. If he was in any way we uh, uh, medically, like I just say, I, I always say one thing to any injured situation, any injury. Uh, if a guy can, in, even Jaime's ankle last year, if they would have said. Uh, he needs to be shut down because he could. It, he, this could worsen for his career. He would have been shut down. You know, there was something he could get fixed later. So you know, he had to manage it. So you know, with the Dem situation, it's simply you know how sore is he, and how much you know can can he play effectively. And if he can't, there's no then there would be no point in playing him. You know, he's going to have to play through some soreness at some point if we're still playing. Um, but he would never be put in a in harm's way, you know, for his career. The question is just how much can he do effectively, you know, which you know is improved every day, and we'll make an assessment on that uh, before the game. That's just kind of where you know it's just we're dealing with you know just for you. I think of it like a sprained ankle. It's just easier to think of that way. You know, like is is he going to be able to you know? It's, it's not game seven, Isaiah against the Lakers. You know, like, you know, there's hopefully if we win, there's more games. Um, but we're worried about Asheville. But at the same time, if he can't be effective, it's, you know, it's no point in putting him out there. 
Question? Jim Alexander from the Southern California News Group. Uh, Tiger and Jaime and what they've done the last couple of years and the experience that they've gotten in tournament play. How influential is that in terms of the rest of the guys in the room and what, they, what they've been able to tell guys about this is what it's like, this is what you need to deal with, this is what you need to concentrate on? Well, I would add David to that. Um, you know, cause My Dave, apologies. <laughs> da David is the most important vocal guy to be honest with you. Um, you know, he's, he's, the mo he's the more vocal of the three guys as a player. Um, but, yeah, it's huge. But I'd say but they proved how good they are at it, or the reason we got 29 wins. Again, the most of any team in the Power Six. I'm going to keep saying that. Um, I don't know if you figured that out. Um, you like that one? I like yeah. it. <laughs> I wish we could toast to that right now. That wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> That's what the Irish do. Um, if, if, we put a, if we put a pint of Guinness in front of you Friday, <laughs> what's going to happen? <laughs> I'm actually not a bit, you know, I'm the only, I, my brother got the beer drinking gene in our family. So, um, but anyway, the, I, I would, you know, just the leadership, what they've done all year, they're going to continue to do it. Um, you know, so I, I also think for freshmen, it, you know, look, we got to win Thursday. I think as every game, for those guys, would, to me, they'd get more comfortable in a tournament setting. Every, you know, game you can get in you, just like the season. You know, Amari would tell you, you know, this, he's gotten more comfortable every game, you know, as, as the season's gone on. So you got to win, get some experience. That helps as well. But it definitely helps playing with some guys that, you know, that have helped you all year make your life easy. You know, um, guard your man when you guard the wrong guy, you know. Uh, change the play when you've run, lined up wrong to make, you know, so we can run something that you actually know. <laughs> These are things that veterans do for rookies, you know. So and we play six freshmen. So it's been it's an unbelievably important uh, part of our season, the, the leadership of our seniors, without a doubt, and the fact that they're great players. And I guess the follow-up would be the difference between then and now. I mean, the difference between – yeah. Conference and now you're in the well, we'll conference see. tournament and now you're in the big tournament. Yeah, and well, you know, I, I mean, I don't have a very verbose answer to that other than we'll see. But I mean, the way, the way a younger player reacts to that, and you, you know, you, they're great you've guys. Seen guys. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah, you know, they're great. They all they trust those guys. I would tell you that. I mean, they totally trust those guys. So, but again, it's all about results. It's a one game shot. So we'll, you know. All this stuff sounds great, and I know you guys got questions to ask me. We got to score more points in Asheville. One more question. I know all the rest of this stuff's neat, but Pember goes, what did he get, 46 in a game this year? If he gets 48, we're in trouble. Okay. He also plays with the leading scorer in the history of their school, which is a very interesting combination. <laughs> so, Coach, thank you. Thank you, my friend. See how the Irish treat each other. <laughs> then, then we fight after the bar closes. <laughs>